Aha Summer. The perfect time to pick up a cold drink, lounge by the pool or the beach, or inside with some good AC, and get lost in a good book. It's the perfect time to get caught up on all those books on your TBR list that you said you'd read all year, but then you got to be stuck doing homework and schoolwork and had other things on your plate. So if you're interested in picking up a great novel now with a hint of science sprinkled in, I've got you covered. In this video, I'm going to go over some recommendations of fictional books with biology aspects that you may want to add to your summer reading list. And there's a lot of great reasons to read fiction to enhance your science knowledge. I actually used to have a project for my honors students that was optional where they could read a fictional book and then give a presentation on the biological aspects of that novel, how realistic the science was, what it's like in real life and it was one of the most fascinating things I got to hear all year. Lastly, science and fiction and science fiction was probably one of the things that got me hooked in science in the first place. Books with fictional technologies, futuristic scenarios, wild medical cases all sparked my imagination from middle school on. So let's get started. I'll start with a book that I've read relatively recently, and that's Wool by Hugh Howey. This book and the series that it's a part of actually inspired the Silo TV series on Apple TV, which I think is a pretty good adaptation of the book. There are some plot changes, but overall, I think the show captures what happens in the book fairly well. The whole story centers around a society somewhere down the line in the future of humanity that exists entirely underground in a giant silo. And so the idea behind the story and the biological aspect that I enjoyed is how humanity or a society functions completely underground, how they get their food, their water, their energy, and of course the psychological aspects of people living together in a society like this. It reminded me a little bit of Biosphere 2, so if you're into ideas about colonizing other planets or what humanity could look like in a different type of environment, this book could be really interesting for you. I will warn you that Wool actually goes beyond what season one of Silo has, so if you don't want spoilers for season two, you may want to hold off until season two comes out to finish the first book. This list would not be complete without some Andy Weir books, and I'm actually going to hit all three, The Martian, Artemis, and Project Hail Mary. All of these are fantastic, and they're different and cool in their own ways. The Martian obviously centers around a man stranded on Mars and his mission to survive and get back home. Artemis is about a fully functioning colony on the moon, and there's a female protagonist. It's very plot driven. I really enjoyed a lot of the characters. And then, of course, Project Hail Mary is another isolation type science fiction thriller with a man who has amnesia. He wakes up somewhere in space and his memories slowly start to come back as he performs experiments and realizes where he is and how he actually has to save humanity. There are tons of aspects of biology in all three of these books. The Martian I actually had students read excerpts from in the past in one of my classes, and the year it came out, I did take students on a field trip to see the movie in theaters, which is fun. But any of these books I would highly recommend, and they're all a little bit different, so if you've read one, I encourage you to read some of the others. Another in the science fiction category is All Systems Red. This is a novella, actually. I wouldn't, I don't think it quite qualifies as a novel. It is part of the Murderbot series by Martha Wells, and it centers around a humanoid security robot who has hacked his own systems and is and pretty much thinks for himself and really just wants to be by himself so he can watch his TV shows and protect the people around him. There are some cool biological aspects about enhanced humans versus what it means to be human and of course all the sci-fi elements of the future. But very fun book, very fun series as well if you want to get into reading all of the books in this Murderbot series. Going back in time a little bit publication-wise to some of Tess Gerritsen's classic books, you may have heard of Tess Gerritsen. She wrote the original Rizzoli and Isles series, but she has also written a lot of good thrillers and medical thrillers. These really engrossed me starting from middle school and I got super into these really detailed scenarios based on things about viruses and organ donation and mysterious pathogens. And Tara Skerritsen actually was a physician herself. Some of her details in her books are very well described and they're super fast paced, engaging, great beach reads. One I'll recommend is Gravity. That one really hooked me. It's another space story. Okay, I've got a lot of space stories on here um, about astronauts who are stranded in space and a mysterious virus is slowly killing them. But there are plenty of others, Harvest, Bloodstream, all great thrillers, and if you're okay with a little bit of blood and gore, these books could be really exciting reads for you. A little less intense and beautifully written is Cutting for Stone by Abraham Verghese. This is about two twin brothers who live in Ethiopia. They both become doctors, and of course there's biology in the medical aspects of the story. It's a beautifully written 
many year long journey of some really interesting characters. If you're more someone who prefers YA books, Unwind by Neil Shusterman was a really fun book that a student of mine actually recommended to me in one of my first years teaching. It is about a dystopian future where teens can actually be unwound if they are deemed undesirable or unwanted. And what that means is they take apart their bodies and then harvest their organs. Super dark, super creepy, but super fun. And the story centers around three teens who escape this fate and what they do in this society is they're sort of running away from this idea of being unwound. This is also part of a series as well. I have only read the first book, but the first one is definitely entertaining and worth reading if you're into YA dystopian novels. If you want to go back to a classic medical thriller author, Robin Cook is one of the ones that I first got hooked on. Coma, Chromosome 6, all of them are page turners, and Robin Cook really is really one of the godfathers of the medical thriller genre. Chromosome 6 in particular is about a geneticist who tries to stop a mad scientist from creating a weird genetically engineered type of people. It's a little on the far-fetched side, but hey, a lot of these are. If you want to go with another classic science fiction writer, Michael Crichton, I would definitely recommend Prey, which is about nanotechnology and swarms of nanorobots that go rogue and have lots of consequences on Earth. This one really captured my imagination thinking about nanotechnology and what robotics could potentially do at a micro scale. And of course it is fiction, but Michael Crichton does do a good job of interweaving real science into his books. And his explanations can get a little lengthy, but the plot is great and it is very much a page turner like many of his other novels. If you want to go back to a classic, classic book with biological aspects. The Fantastic Voyage by Isaac Asimov is a great choice. This is really the OG magic school bus because a team of scientists is shrunk down and sent inside a human body to perform a life-saving medical procedure. But of course, the fantastic voyage they're on is the journey through the human body. So if you're into classic literature and you like The Magic School Bus, this book could be a great summer read for you. Lastly, I'll leave you with a little bit more obscure one, I would say probably the least biological out of all of these recommendations, but The Arm of the Starfish by Madeline Langle was one of my favorite books I remember reading as a teen. You might remember other Madeline Langle books, including the very famous A Wrinkle in Time, but she has a whole universe and a cast of characters that appear in other stories that are a little less far-fetched than the world she imagines in A Wrinkle in Time. And The Arm of a Starfish takes place in our world, and the plot centers around an international conspiracy and a marine biologist's research. The ending of this book has stuck with me years after I read it, and I will warn you, it does end on a cliffhanger, but it is a fun, fast-paced story, and it does have some pretty interesting biological aspects that I'm not gonna reveal now because they might spoil the plot, but I encourage you to look it up if you've read any of other Madeline Langle's books and you enjoyed her writing. There are plenty more books with biological aspects that I have not mentioned in this video, so go ahead and drop your favorites in the comments below. If you've read any of the books I've recommended, which ones did you like, which ones did you not like, and be sure to let me know if you'd like more videos like this. Give this video a like if it's been helpful. Thanks so much for watching. Happy reading and I'll see you later.